Sure, anytime, anytime. Now it is recording. So today, actually, we are going to talk how to create engaging presentation for your online classes. You know, online classes become very popular these days, yes? And I personally like online classes because there's no border. You can be anywhere and your students can be miles away, but still you have classes. But the important thing is uh, we need to consider some facts and uh, we work on it because online classes environment is very different person to person or on site classes. So today we are going to talk about synchronous and asynchronous environment, uh, how to work with technology, flip classroom, and different platforms for online classes that you can use. So the very first step is you should know your platform. First, you need to know it yourself. Then you should, before starting the course, you need to have a session. You need to have a session with your students and introduce all parts and how to use this platform, how it works. Like how to use chat box, where to type, where is the video of teacher, what about breakout rooms, okay? So what is breakout room and uh, where can students work in pairs and groups? And how can they ask questions in breakouts? Pointers, how pointer works or how they can control their audio or when they have questions, uh, how to raise hands. And um, interactive whiteboard. So how you get how can they get access to write something on the whiteboard and even how to turn on their video so you can see your learners it's much better it's much better all the during the class the videos are on because uh, I mean uh, it's better for the students and not only for the students also for the teacher because when you are seeing some someone you can get kind of uh, feeling that you're communicating with people. Otherwise, it's just talking to your laptop or to a screen. So it's better that the students have their video on. And where is the list of the students? And how to control videos. So it's good to know the platform and all the students understand how to use different features on the platform. This is the very first step. And then check it that it works well with the students and with your internet uh, speed. And uh, I mean, you, you should be uh, comfortable with the platform as well as a teacher. What is the step two is setting smart goals. Do you have any ideas by smart goals, what I mean? When I say setting smart goals, what do I mean? Do you have any ideas? It means your objective should be smart. That's what you are trying to teach in an online class and what mm -hmm. techniques you should, it should not be so much long enough that uh, the, the child or the student that is sitting uh, other side of the screen will get bored. So it should be very attentive and very smart and very convenient for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. So basically each letter stands for one word. So smart actually S refers to specific goal. It should be specific. It should be clear and measurable. So when I say it is measurable, it means, you know, how far you get rich to that goal or how well your students uh, can use that target language or how well they learn it. Uh, like they can use the positive and negative form of 
modal verbs. So it's measurable. Achievable, it means based on their level, based on their ability. So you can get to that goal. So it should be achievable and realistic. And realistic, of course, and timely. So if you have one hour class, so the material should be uh, consists of the main activity, variety activities for sure. But if you design or if you plan variety activities, you need to consider it's only for one hour and I have pre-while post. So we cannot have lots of practice for a while and then you don't have time for post. So it should be timely. So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. What is next is how to engage our learners in online classes. Do you have any experience, any of you, do you have any experience of teaching online? Or maybe you're now have some classes online. Yes, please. Yes, I do that. Uh-huh. And how do you engage your students? Uh, I plan different activities for them. For example, if I'm teaching them uh, greater than and less than, so not really just like uh, playing board and any game, I will play a game with them. And uh, I use my uh, hands and my eye coordination and something like that so they can uh, focus on my screen. I used to sing the song also. I used to uh, different things with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Okay. Hello, Shazia. Hello, Selena. Good to have you here. We just started. So the focus of this webinar is on online learning or online classes. Excellent. Okay. okay. Thank you. So just remember. For your uh, online classes, we have two environments, synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous learning environment means that at the same time, you and students are in the class. So like, like now, I'm in the class, you are in the class, we're talking, I ask questions, you answer, we're discussing different topics, and uh, we can have uh, communication at the same time. This is synchronous. Asynchronous is a time like you study uh, in Canvas, the modules, okay? There are lots of material over there at your speed, at your convenient time, in your convenient time, you just check it. Maybe you check the modules and study it every day, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, or maybe three days a week. So it's on your own schedule. That is asynchronous. Uh, it's possible, it's possible even for your online, I mean, even for your on-site classes, in-person classes, you also have asynchronous learning environments. I mean, you upload some material in some site or forum, or even maybe the institute has a special environment. And the students can access to those they were to those material and they can study it. But for sure, for sure, for your online classes, you do need to share many materials like videos, worksheets, okay? Like videos, worksheets, um, maybe um, their assignment some instructions, okay, in asynchronous environments. So it's good to share a link like Google Classroom, or I, I, I'm going to talk about different links for your whiteboard or some sites that you can share the link with your students. And they can click on it and just access to material which is needed, which your instructions for the class, okay? For engaging your students, so in synchronous, it's much easier. Like you can have games. So in games, 
which you need to plan for online games, all the students get involved. You can even put them in breakouts and give them some activities. And while they are talking together, practicing that, you can monitor them. Just turn your cursor on your name and move to each uh, breakout and check with them and see what are they doing or uh, how good they're working on the activity. To design any activities for the class, you need to know your audience. Your, you need to know your students. When I say uh, you need to know your students, what do I mean by knowing your students? Do you have any ideas? Well, knowing their levels, uh, their interests, and, or sometimes even problems. They may have some issues, uh, dealing with issues, so, so we can assign a specific information or work on certain content. Bravo. Very good. Knowing their interests and hobbies. That's very important. Uh, when I want to have, like, uh, speaking activities, like uh, some activities to practice grammar part or find some reading material. So it's much better based on their interests or experience, hobbies or careers, because they, have, they already have the motivation for reading, for studying. If it's not very related to their interests, so it's so hard to, to create motivation for students to study it. So it's better we know them. Also, the other good point that you mentioned was maybe they have some problems in using the platform. Or they have some issues. They don't know how to email something. They don't know how to upload something. So it's good to know. I mean, it's good to talk to them. and. Uh, see what's the problems. Maybe it's very difficult for them to use the technology. So we need to help them for sure. And moving activity. Move up activity, especially for young learners and adolescents is essential. They really get bored. They lose their uh, concentration when they have to sit for an hour. So I'm thinking about some kind of move up activities, like go around the house, find something interesting. You have one minute to find it and then come to your webcam and show it to the class and you have to use five adjectives to talk about it. So, okay, is it just moving around, finding something, you know? Or just go to the window, see outside, look through the window and see outside, come back and tell me what could you see? Or what's happening outside? Even if say, I couldn't see anyone, oh, okay, you couldn't see anyone, but, but what else? Even no, I mean, nothing. That you could see something. So talk about it. What's your feeling about it? And I say, yeah, I could see the, I mean, small park which is near our house. Oh, good. So talk about that park. Okay. So moving. Think about moving activities. And the extended the learning window. It means it's not just. Uh, listening to the teacher, doing the activity in the breakout, and error correction. No. Uh, you can even in your online classes give them time to Google something because they are already using technology. They are using their laptops or cell phone or desktop. So they access to the internet. So you can raise some questions. Oh, okay, tell me about. Uh, even for lower levels, uh, talk about Wonderland entertainment parks around the country. Can you Google it and tell me how many amusement parks, entertainment parks, Wonderlands are in your country? Because your students maybe 
from different countries. Even for lower level, you can raise up some activities, okay? Raise up some questions and they Google it and tell you, or you put them in pairs and give them some, the keywords and say, okay, I want you to decide in your group how you can make games with these keywords. Maybe they make up some quest, make some questions. Maybe they make puzzles. Maybe they start to draw something, to draw something and ask the other group to tell a story and use the, the words and tell the story based on the pictures. Let them be creative and also meanwhile you work on your creative, uh, critical thinking. So they have 10 minutes to decide. So just make it different. Just make it different. And consider their learner's autonomy. They should learn how to take the responsibility to study. Okay? How to search for it. How to think for that. How to consult with the other people. So the four C's. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity, which are the four main C's of 21st century characteristics. Good. Now, when you want to plan for your online classes, these questions could be the important questions you usually ask from yourself. How will you introduce the activity? Mm -hmm. Thinking about instructions, they should be very clear for the students. Okay? Using pictures helps a lot. Giving examples by writing on the whiteboard or making PowerPoint so they can see, it's, it's very, very essential. Hello, Alia. Good to have you here. Okay? So think about, think about instructions. Even when you give them assignment, I recommend make a very short, especially for lower level, make a very short video, record yourself. I mean, you can use your cell phone. Record yourself and put a very short video and explain it for lower level in your words, with your gestures, and then give them an example. You can send them a written instructions, but maybe for lower levels, it's better they see you. So they have a chance to review your video one, two, or three times. Just work on instructions to be as clear as possible. And you need to prepare. I'm telling you, you need to prepare visual aids. You need to find videos short video clips. You need to find posters or make posters, pictures, okay? And uh, even you have to, sometimes you have to record something for your students. Then time. You know, in your online classes, you're just talking about, let me give you an example. You're just talking about one topic and then you see, oh, you need 20 minutes. So just keep track of time, seriously. So all, I mean, I have the time and my laptop. Also, I put a watch over here. So I keep looking at it. So it's 10 minutes, five minutes, six minutes, okay? You cannot put fixed time, definitely. Sometimes your students have questions. I, I understand it. But, but, uh, but we need to know if your class is only, you need to know if your class is only for an hour, so how much time you put for your presentation part, how much time you put for practice, and then you need time to get the feedback. What about giving assignments? And how can you, at the very end, how can you recap? Mm -hmm. Just a review with your students once more. 
and your students know what they have learned this session and what are they going to do for the next session. Using pictures really works well, really works well in online classes, especially big images. So one could be making a rubric for students. So each session or every three sessions, students understand how well they are learning or improving in this course. So you have their names and you put comments for their performances and you explain to them about their rating scale and you say, okay, in this activity for adults, this is, it goes for adults and you can say it to teenagers. And uh, not very young teenagers, but to teenagers, you also can explain. So in this activity, the point, the main point is using correct punctuation in your writing. Okay, this is the this is the the, the indicator. Mm -hmm. Now I check your writing and I see okay, and then you read their names and said you can look at your um, feedback. You still, for example, Tom, you still have problem in using commas. So once you use study this material, I'm gonna email it to you, or you can check this link and find the material. I want you to study, and next time I will check it again if you can use commas in correct place. I mean, correctly in your writing. So it's good to have a rubric for scoring and making PowerPoint. Do you have any experience of making PowerPoint? Do you? Have you ever made PowerPoint for your classes? Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I wanna, guys, let me see. Yeah, I wanna open another PowerPoint just, just to check the different features that you have. So let me know if you can open. So, no. Let me open new ones. So can you see it? I mean, can you see my screen with the new PowerPoint? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. So here you can search for templates. Mm -hmm. Search for templates. You can choose any one that you like. Even there are some sites uh they have you have access for free template um for example i just choose this one then you can use the color and then you click on create okay when you put the click on layout okay look it gives you different layouts for uh each slide this one for the first, so you have to put the title and your name here, like teaching skills, and they put your name here, Alham Selgi. Mm -hmm. Then for the next, you can choose any layouts that you like. This one here, you can add table, you can insert chart, you can insert smart art graphic, even online pictures, or even you can copy and paste if you have already have it. I mean, pictures in your uh, on your file in your uh, computer, so you can copy and paste here. What's more like speaking? And then let's go for one. I want to have some some slides. So it's listening. And this one is reading, for example. And this one for writing. Okay, so um, when you want to type, it gives you options, definitely, what phone do you like, what size, and even what color. Okay, from which side here, here if you have, you, you need bullets, so we can put bullets here, 
and uh, which side you want to type and text directions and everything. Then you have insert. So here you insert shapes, smart art, charts, photos, okay? Even online pictures or pictures from your, as I said, copy or insert the file, the file in your computer and insert it or copy it and paste it here. You can put comments when you click on comments. So you have here comments. This is for you. So you put comments. Maybe you put one picture here and then you want to, you want to remind something, some important tips. So you put comments here. Then when you close it, you have, for example, when I close it, so you have this sign here. Whenever you click on it, you can see the comments. Mm -hmm. Header and footer. So you say, for example, I want slide number for all the slide, apply to all, and the footer, right, uh, TSO. Apply to all, so you can see TESOL here, see, to the footer. Then design, maybe you want to change the design, change the color, so you choose, for example, this one or this one. If you want to change it, you can choose it here, or even the color. I want it to this color or this color. Here, you can change the background format. So here is texture fill. You can have it, for example, pattern fill, and then you choose different patterns. Even you can choose the color. So it is brown. You said, no, I want a red. Okay, so different patterns you can use. Then transition, how do you like it shows, okay? Of course you have returned, if we go back to the first. Okay, so then you say, how do you like to uh, show each slide? Like this one is the front one, then you say, I want to shop the second one, or wipe, or split, or like random bars. So here or glitter. So when you put it in this format, so see, show it the way that you like. Okay, show the way that you like it. Then you put escape, it gets out of that form. Then animation. So you put bullets, for example, here, you said uh, pre-teaching tasks. This is the first bullet. Then while teaching tasks, post teaching tasks, and assignments, okay? So I don't want to show everything from the very beginning to the students, good? So let me make it a bit bigger, I think. It's good better. So to here, animation, you click on it, then it said the first, I want, the when I open this slide, I want reading first, so fly in. Then this one, the second choice. So I want it, so I will. This one, float in. This one, I mean, maybe all the same or different, but you have different choices. And this is for the last one, like buns. So when you have a slideshow here, then when you click, you can see the reading. 
Then you talk about the stages. So when you click on enter, each item shows the way that you've chosen. Good. And then slideshow, you can, I usually, I myself usually control it it's because sometimes students start to ask some questions. So I wouldn't stop and talk to them. Otherwise, you can put the program from beginning to the end for each slide three seconds. You, you can give this time, rehearsal time, and it goes, automatically it goes. Then you have review for a language, translate, spelling check. So you can make the spelling check active. And the view goes how you want to show it. The how, how should be the outline and the slide sorter and note page and everything. Okay? So this is how to work with PowerPoint. For your online classes, I can say 90% of the time you need to prepare PowerPoint. Good? Is that clear to everyone? Okay. Good then. So what's next is, so far, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay, okay thank you then. So that's how you make PowerPoint. Then flipped classroom. Mm -hmm. um, flipping, it means, you know, as you know your students and you know the material, you want your students to be prepared for some pre-teaching task before coming to the class. So you want to share with them some material or like a video clip or a text before coming to the session. So how do you can do it? You can put it somewhere and share the link, like in Google Classroom or online whiteboard, or, or you can email to all the students, or maybe you can put it in a forum that you have with your students and they can check it and study before coming to the class. Or even after the session, after the session, you will ask them to Google something or you give them a questions and said, I want everybody to think about these questions and send the ideas to this app. And so all the students can see what other students say or what other student uh, wrote about it. Mm -hmm. So they share or you send them some assignments. So that's Philippine before coming to the class get prepared or after coming to the class for doing assignment or doing some activities which you need it for your online classes and i believe even in on-site classes in person classes you have to flip some material even before or after so here uh you have some uh, apps or sites like google classroom that you can share the link and upload something for them and the students can check it later. Even you can have your classroom on Zoom, which is very popular and it's very friendly. WebEx, as we have, Skype, which is very, which is free. But the only thing with the Skype is, the Skype usually used for, I mean, it's being used for um, private classes because there's no breakouts room. So it works well for private classes. And big blue button also. The same, I mean the same format. You have the whiteboard, you have chatting box, um, breakout room, video icon, and you can share the video, students can share the video, and audio control. So, I mean basically the platform is the same. Lino, I mean, there are some sites or apps which are free, like Lino. Lino, you can create a page for your classroom and share the link. It's free, it's free. So you can create a room 
or a page for, for example, classroom A, classroom another one for classroom B. It gives you a link. And then you have to tick, everybody can use this link. Can you see the notes? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it later, actually. Let me finish this PowerPoint. I'm going to show you also how it works. So students can see uh, what you put over there and can they write their uh, ideas. Lino. For homework also, uh, as I said, you need to record yourself for the instructions and be as clear as possible. Even you can ask your students to record themselves and send you their homework as a video clip recording. It's fun too, so they can email it to you. There is a site, Edpuzzle, Edpuzzle, which is free that you can sign up and edit your videos. You can even introduce Edpuzzle to your students. They can edit their videos, cut somewhere, add pictures. So it's just fun. You can give them projects, especially adolescents love it. Quizlet. Quizlet also another app. You can find even quizzes, <laughs> worksheets for online classes and how to share it with your students. So before the class, familiarize yourself with the material, activity, platform, and uh, synchronous, asynchronous environment that you're going to use. Also your students. In class, prepare different kinds of variety activities, move up activities, for your students, especially young learners and teenagers. How to put them in the context, how to engage your students. So set up variety activity and give instruction as clear as possible. Just check with your, have instruction checking question. Check with your students, they learn, they know what should they do. When you put them in breakouts, you need to go to different breakouts and check out with them if they are on the right track. So while running the activity, putting in pairs and groups, it's constantly you need to go to the breakout rooms and listen to them and give them prompts or correct them. And how to close the activity, recap, give them feedback and review the main points with your students. And post activity, follow up homework. How can they practice at home? just to become more fluent and accurate. One important thing, in your online classes, ask your students to turn on their video cam mm -hmm, and keep asking questions. Even if they cannot turn on, I mean, because of the internet speed and these things. So they type to you in the chat box. Don't talk too much. Mm -hmm. Just engage, think about engaging. Using breakouts works really good. Having online games. Start energetically, move up activity, and finish on high note. Uh, what mm -hmm. if you said, I always, uh, I'll come back to you in a minute. I always ask my students, for example, they are primary students to sing at the beginning and at the end. That would be nice. That would be nice too. Okay, guys, uh, some of you has a question. I also want to show you how to work with Lino. Yes, please ask me your questions. Yes, please. Ma'am, I'm leaving to drop my niece to school. It's a yes. yes. Oh, okay. So, guys, you can sign up, it's free. And like here, this is one page I had for one of my webinars. Okay, let me choose another page, it's too busy. Uh, this is another page. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, any pages that I found, they're full of uh, stickers. So uh, you can put up uh, questions. What I have learned today, okay, that's one. Then the uh, students can choose one of stickers and type here. I have learned about 
how to make PowerPoints for my classes or anything else or any questions, then they post it. So it comes here. Mm -hmm. So see, you can see, see what other students have already posted. Mm -hmm. How they can how they can send or how can they see it? Only here, look. You just share the link with your students. Share the link. And before before this link here, I mean before this page, there's another page that you tick, everybody can you can see my page. You need to tick that part. Everybody can see my the page. Then you share the link, or you can even make an I mean there are look here before login. There are different formats like here. You can choose a format and uh, then you write your whatever you want to share with your students and share the link with them. So they click on the link and get into the page and write what you ask them to do. Okay, so Lino, Lino.com. You got it? And at the same time, they can type something in the chat box for you guys. Mm -hmm. Well, what if it is asynchronous? I see. Time that you are not in the class, your students not in the class, but you want to share with something which you like your assignment, like about the brain story that you have already had in the class. So you want to ask them for further practice. Mm -hmm. So you can put it like in Lino. Mm -hmm. And just email or share the link with your students. Yeah. In some institutes, they have forum page for each class. Mm -hmm. So you can share that one. Or Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. So you can share the link of the Google. Okay? This is uh, what I was saying, that you need to be in contact with your students, online students, from session to session. It's not only two sessions. Okay, in a week. So from Saturday to Monday, I need to be in contact with my students. Like Canvas that you have in TESOL. Mm -hmm. So you have many, I mean, so much things over there. You can study text, materials, you can check it anytime that you like. So at your convenience, you can go and even YouTube webinars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can watch it two or three times. That's asynchronous. And you can write emails, ask questions from TESOL. So you're in contact with the course, you know? Mm -hmm. I see. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for sharing your ideas. And it's a time for asking your questions for your assignment or anything about the course. Mm. Do we have